Right, morning guys. We're back at Diva Springs again. There's the lodge there. A bit colder today. Got the fleece on as well today. Water's looking really clear today. Got the two rods today. I'm going to try a few different methods. The last couple of times I haven't seen that many fish in the margins because it has been very very busy and it's going to be busy again today. So I brought the intermediate rod with the big olive leech on. So we're going to give that a go casting as far as I can on the intermediate line. I'm going to chuck it right into the middle of this lake. So that's going to be the plan of attack why I've got the two rods set up and on the floating line gone with uh, my favourite copper and orange wind always seems to blow into that bay the fish tend to follow it as well so that bay over there today fish just jumped clean out of the water in front of Ray the chap there so something different to start guys not just stalking we're gonna have a go have a session pulling lures at Diva Springs Well, that is like tap water today. That's lovely. The leech is looking good. Let me just move that chair aside a little bit. Check the drag on the back of your reel because sometimes when you, when I'm setting up, I slacken the drag right off so I don't want it too slack I want a little bit of resistance in here yeah. wind's cutting across from the side a little bit that's in a little bit awkward today so this is the airflow 40 plus fast intermediate line through the olive leech right into the middle of the lake <laughs> and I had a bite within a couple of casts it's been a quiet start <laughs> we haven't seen anybody with a fish yet nothing in the margins so I think I could do worse just concentrating throwing the fly out until a few fish start to show Little diva rainbow. Oh. Having a go. Quiet start to the day, but I'm sure it'll pick up. Oh, he's having a go now. He's woke up now. reads it. There we are. A little rainbow but it's a start. Let's dispatch him. So there we are. First of the day. Nice Got a four pound ice pack diva rainbow, and that was on the sort of blue eyed damsel leech pattern. Got the gold holographic strip underneath as well. 
I used to fly that. So let's try it again. Coming for it. Ooh. The fish there was interested. Coming for it. He's coming for it. Granny's got it. Ooh, the copper. Copper with the red head. Turn to my net, you. <laughs> Paul, bring your net. I think mine's in. I think mine's on. I think I put mine on the inside. <laughs> I put a bloody big net to me today. I think big. Just in case. Thanks, but I took my vest off to get my stringer out, and I think I put it on inside out at the back. Yeah, I bet you're in there. It's okay. Good man, thanks, but. Right, let's dispatch. Right, here we go, guys. Second fish, spring. On the old copper and orange. Copper and orange. There we are. Good. Right, that was a nice cast. This stalky bag isn't too heavy, 4mm, so I can cast it okay. If it got any heavier into the 5mm, can't cast it like that. I'm not seeing tons of fish in the margins. You got one of you? Yeah. Well done, well done. Doodly dee dee. Young boy there got his fish. I'm sure if I'm weed or leafed. 
See a bow wave then. Good then? Oh, I see him. I see him. I couldn't have been far away from him then. <laughs> Seen the bow wave coming on that little dude. Or is it a tiger or something? Spotty thing, wasn't it? Got him this time. Thanks, mate. Change the fly. It's going to move off, but change the fly. What a little, little damsel nymph pattern on leech version. And we've got a tiger. My first ever tiger. Sweet. Oh, that's sweet. Right, let's dispatch him. Oh yeah, my first ever tiger. Let's get the hook out a sec. Look at the colour on that. Beautiful. Lovely. First ever tiger trout. About five pound I expect. Yeah, and caught on a sort of 
little olive white pattern, twin eyes, got blue flash and a little leech tail. Lovely. My first ever tiger. That's great. There we are guys. I didn't have the camera on, I was playing that one, but my last Diva Rainbow on the olive leech again. We're up on the olive ultraviolet leech. Excellent. There we are guys. I've had my four diva today. I've had that lovely bonus tiger trout, my first ever as well. So I'd done what I set out to really. I said I wanted a catch on the intermediate line, pulling the lure. So I caught two of them on that big olive leech pulling and I caught one on a smaller damsel olive leech and one on a copper stalking bug. So a good day, one on copper and then three on olive leech patterns. Excellent. Right guys, we've had a great day fishing. And Peter is now going to make us really jealous and he's going to take me and Baz to the Jurassic Pond underneath the lodge. Guys, this is the lodge. It's just another hole in the facility. And we're going down. Underneath. Yeah. This is just a, a quiet environment where fish can see what they do. It was like the done as a stress free <coughs> environment, Pete, wasn't it? Something when Nigel did it originally? Yeah, Nigel um, originally had it with a recirculating unit so that um, you know, it was just kept as a one unit, if you like, where they sort of knew what was happening for it all the time. Yes. What it really is is a quiet place where a fish can just do what they like without any hassle. No, no, way no, way no miracle thing, but it, um, it just put a load of really nice fish in here and just see what they do. Do they, do, is the growth, um, do they grow, put on more weight in the year in here? It's yet to be proven. Right, okay. Um, you know, a couple of years ago I had a batch of fish in here that they started at six pounds and a year or so later, one or two of them were up to 16, but a lot were still at six. You yeah. can make them grow. No, no. Some will, some won't, some die along the way. Look at that blue buzz. Yeah, some of these blues are looking really, really nice. Wow. Um, so we're just, just going to see. What and how many fish are in there? Not too many, I guess? Not too many. Uh, can't put brownies in because brownies jump out. Right. right. It's got to do with the genetics of the fish, isn't it? So each individual fish. Some grow, some don't. Like, you know, you gave us, um, this is a huge one, right? Yeah. Um, but if you gave us three fish and chips twice a day, yeah. one of us would be 27, probably hard. Mm -hmm. um, well, I've only got five to go. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun, I mean, I, I just love feeding the fish, I, I like seeing them every day. I think every, well all anglers love, yeah. it's part of the fishing, isn't it? You love all this it's feeding the fish. And then eventually, of course, they become your little friends when they get feeding fish. Yes, when and you start giving them names then, I expect. Yeah, then when horrible people like you catch them. So when you get a really big fat one, you won't call it Martin, okay? <laughs> 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 oh, you've got one! Thanks! <laughs> wow. But Stuart works out these feed rates, you know, for all the fish and yes. all the ponds. And um, it's, it's very carefully controlled. It's not just bunging the pellets in. Um, Isn't it about 1% of their body weight or something like that? Or, or, yeah. Some grow, some don't, different days. You can't feed them. High atmospheric pressure or high humidity is not feed. Um, you know, it's so if you did, if you did chuck, you know, the pellets in literally by the uh, lorry load, would the fish get fat? Yeah, get too much fat in the belly. They get too much fat in the belly, yeah. yeah okay. like you and I, though, 
Yeah, yeah. I'm just somewhere we can't see it somewhere in here there will be huge numbers of little baby roach. Right. And they never touch them. No? no. The same as all the ponds. They're all rearing ponds. They've got loads of meadows and perish roach and things in them. They don't touch them. You don't touch them. You think it would be such a danger for a fish to be in the ponds and be trying to fish. And in, in the lakes, it's, it's very, very rare for a fish to take any of the roach. In the browns? Yeah, very rare. Just occasionally they'll take some of the little tiny ones. Yes. But you'd think, why don't you eat the available food? Yeah. But um, no, it seems to just move on. Bigger walkers they will, but the small <laughs> fish really doesn't really happen. Mm. It's lovely watching them, isn't it? And they are all different, aren't they? Oh, yes. There's some big old kippers in there. Growing quick. Yeah. Things happen at the moment. I just don't get so often. Like any large population of creatures, something's going to happen. The blues are very distinct, aren't they? Wow. Yeah. So there. Yeah, you see it. There we are. So right. we've Monday seen Diva's Jurassic Pond. <laughs> Let me switch the recording off, Martin.